In our last session in statistics, we have looked at common terms which are used in statistics, one of which is data. Data is a plural of the word datum. Datum is nothing but a single piece of information obtained about a variable. Whereas data is number of pieces of information gained from number of people or number of events which are observed and that's why it's a plural. So data are nothing but the building blocks in statistics whereby we can make inferences to the population from which this information is drawn. There are many classifications of data which are available. I'll be talking about the most common types. Data is basically classified into two types, quantitative and qualitative. Now as the word suggests, quantitative means counting in numbers. Qualitative means counting in a different fashion, not in by the way of numbers. So when we look at quantitative data, we again have two subtypes under quantitative data. One is known as the discrete type of data and the other is known as continuous type of data. Now when we talk about quantities, we need to remember that when we are looking at continuous type of data, this data will have units at the end of the quantity. I'll give you an example of a continuous data. Heights, weights, blood pressure. These are examples whereby we have to give the height, the unit of the height either in centimeters, meters or inches, weights either in kilograms or pounds or blood pressure in millimeters of mercury. So when we measure height or weight of an individual, we need to give or specify the unit in which it has been measured because height in centimeters which is recorded is not the same as height in meters. So if it is 100 centimeters, it, if you don't write the unit, somebody may mistakenly take it as 100 meters which would then cause an error in interpretation. So we have to be very careful when we talk about continuous data. It will have a unit at the end of the quantity which is measured. That's about continuous data. When we look at discrete data, it's nothing but we are counting. However, we cannot give a unit at the end of that count or the event. Example of discrete data, number of children born in a particular hospital, number of patients attending outpatient department, number of deaths occurring in a given population. These are nothing but discrete or whole numbers which are measured. They do not have a unit at the end of course because they are just measured as part of the whole. So what we have seen till now is the types of quantitative data to continuous and discrete. Now coming to qualitative data, it is also known as categorical data because this data is interpreted in the form of categories. And under categorical data, we again have two varieties nominal and ordinal. Now when we talk of nominal data, we can have different categories within. Either it can be two categories in which case it is known as dichotomous categorical data or the categories can be more than two in number. The best example for a dichotomous type of continuous, uh, I'm sorry, dichotomous type of categorical data is sex or gender. So generally we will put, if we see a survey form, we will see sex and the options would be male and female. So we are going to take the number of males and the number of females in the particular population. So that makes it a nominal kind of data which is dichotomous in nature. Other example of nominal type of data which is not dichotomous would be uh, a rating scale for example if we have undergone uh, a particular procedure and if you want to rate it as whether it is very good good not so good or bad it becomes four categories so it becomes nominal type of categorical data which is not dichotomous in nature because it has got more than two categories then we move on to what is ordinal type of data now when we look at ordinal type of data as the name suggests there is bit of an order in which the data is organized and the example of which would be grades of malnutrition. So if we have to classify malnutrition 
in different categories suppose we have four categories we put is put it as grade 1 2 3 4 and we know here that there is a logical order wherein grade 1 is less severe malnutrition whereas grade 4 is the most severe variety of malnutrition so the order is quite important when we put this these quantities in a tabular form or when we present the data so that's very important in understanding the difference between nominal and ordinal. In a nominal kind of data, there is no particular order. For example, if we take a race as an example for nominal data, so you can put different people belonging to different races um, in those categories. But we cannot say that this race is superior to the other race just on the basis of presentation of the data. Whereas when we look at the example of malnutrition, we have to express it in a particular order. Either you put grade 4 first or you put grade 1 first, but it always means that grade 1 is less severe than grade 4 malnutrition. So in a nutshell, today we have discussed the two main types of data, quantitative and qualitative. Under quantitative, we have got the continuous and the discrete types. Under qualitative, we have got the nominal and ordinal types. So that's all from me today. Please do keep watching and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Have a good day.